YouTube, Autumn Beckman here. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. My channel is all about luxury on a budget, so if you're into that sort of thing, make sure you like the videos that you enjoy, subscribe, and click the bell notification icon to be notified when I post a new video. That's a lot to try to say in one breath. Today's video is a Q&A, and the road workers outside are finally gone. It's the weekend. They're not jackhammering anymore, so I can actually sit and film without you guys going crazy like I have been. All right, I got a lot of questions from you guys and I don't know how long it's gonna take me to go through this. I'm gonna try to go kind of quickly, do a little bit of a rapid fire thing because I know in previous Q and A's I tend to talk and talk and they take forever. I would love to fit all this in one video, but I suspect it will end up in two, hopefully not three, but we'll see. I'm gonna start with the Instagram question. First of all, thank you all for submitting questions. I got some excellent questions this time and I really appreciate it. Betsy Arvai, Arvay, if I pronounced your name wrong, I do apologize. Um, it's tricky sometimes. So Betsy, are you a jewelry person? Do you have your eye on any costume jewelry pieces from any luxury fashion houses? What are your thoughts on Chanel, Dior, or Gucci earrings, brooches, or necklaces? Um, I am a jewelry person. I have a lot of jewelry. The vast majority of it is costume jewelry. That's definitely more my thing than the fine jewelry. Every once in a while, I have a little fine jewelry piece, but that doesn't happen very often. As far as the costume jewelry from luxury fashion houses, personally, I think they have some great designs, but I don't see the value in spending that kind of money on a costume piece. I know Yota Style put a video up recently. Uh, it was a Louis Vuitton unboxing and she also s showed some earrings that look like the Dior tribal earrings. And I'll link her video below so you can check it out and get the information on those. But her earrings were real pearls and real gold and they were only $100 and I don't know what the Dior earrings go for, but more than $100 I'm sure. And then Chanel, I know they are notorious for if they have a brooch or earrings or something that has little stones or little pearls, they're notorious for those falling out. Why you would want to spend that kind of money on a piece that is not well made, I don't understand. Um, I also have to say too, I am generally against fake bags. I like inspired things and I differentiate that by whether or not one has a logo, but I have been eyeing some, I guess I'll call them fake because they have the logos, the fake Chanel, for example, jewelry, some earrings and brooches that I've found on the internet on Etsy, for example. I don't know. I have mixed feelings about it. I haven't bought any of it yet, but I'm... I'm thinking about maybe a brooch at some point and you know I'd much rather spend $30 on something than several hundred on the Chanel one that the quality might be just about the same actually. Okay that was a long answer. See what I mean? Sarah Evans 83 whose handbag collection would you love to raid? I just did a video on that so I will link that below. That was a tag and it was called luxury items I would steal from youtubers. So all the answers are well not all the answers because I narrowed it down to 10 but that that pretty much answers your question I think Queen of Barbs has a long where she's explaining some things to me a long comment here but her question is basically how I store my bags and SLGs do I keep them in dust bags and and she said she knows not to keep them in the boxes but she's heard different things about keeping them in the dust bags I kept mine in dust bags for a long time just to keep the dust off of them and to keep light off the vachetta, but I have a closet now that doesn't get any natural light and it's not dusty in there, so I went ahead and took everything out of the dust bags. One of the problems with the dust bags is that you don't always remember what you have in them, so I have the dust bag folded underneath the bag and the bag sitting on top and now I can see everything and it's pretty and... I know what I have, so it's easier when I'm getting dressed in the morning to pick a bag that'll go with my outfit. So that's what I do. As far as which is better for the materials, that I don't know. I wouldn't think there's anything wrong with keeping a piece in a dust bag, because as long as it's a, like a natural fabric, air can get through. It's ventilated. It seems like that would be okay. Coffee with Nadia, what is your favorite bag at this time? Huh. It's a hard question to answer because I'm not somebody who tends to carry one bag a lot. I tend to rotate every day. I, I'm really good about 
Um, I have a little tray on, on a bookshelf in my room and I take everything out of my bag and put it on the tray. And I'm really good about switching bags every day. So it's hard for me to pick a favorite. I don't really know. I have been carrying my coach Cassie a lot. That's been really handy for going out and running a quick errand. But I'm on summer break too and I don't have to carry a bigger bag that has more stuff in it. So I have been carrying smaller ones this summer. Doesn't really answer your question, sorry. How what one, two, three, four, funny name, says, do you like or wear perfumes? If so, which do you wear and which, and what do you think of the LV perfumes? I tend to be very sensitive to all kinds of things and scent is one of them. I smell things all the time that other people don't smell and smells, a lot of smells bother me that other people don't even notice. Perfumes, most of them, I find uh, very just chemically and I they bother me. Um, so generally I don't wear perfumes. Every once in a while I'll find something that I like but still I hardly ever wear them. I'll put a tiny dab on neck and wrists and that'll be it, but I don't even wear them every day. What do I think of the LV perfumes? I haven't even smelled them because of, you know, because I don't really wear perfumes, so. And it's a little bit of a shame because my sales associate at Vuitton, who used to be my sales associate at Henry Bendel, she's the perfume person at Vuitton. She's always trying to get me to sample perfumes. Mama Nab, is there an easy or easier way to find a bag from a particular year? No specific bag, bag just a specific year made. Um, I think probably the easiest thing that I have found is to go into some of the Facebook groups for Vuitton and ask people, do you have a bag with this date code? Because when I'm thinking about resellers like Fashion File and Rebag and The Real Real, none of them have a way to search for the date code. So you'd have to go through and look at each individual bag and not all of them even list the date codes. Uh, Fashion File does. <sighs> you know what one of my favorite things is? When you're in the middle of filming something like this and then you look down at your screen to see if it's still filming and it's not and then you have to go back and put the card in the computer and figure out where it stopped and then go back and redo a lot of the stuff you just did. That's a lot of fun. So I was saying a lot of those sites don't even have the date codes listed, so you'd have to email them and some of them aren't even gonna bother sending you that information. So I would say that the best place to go, at least if it was me doing it, would be to go to a Facebook group and ask for a particular year that you're looking for. I've seen people do that quite a bit, so that's the route I would take. How what one two three four asks, what do you think about Versace? I really don't know much about Versace. I don't follow them. I don't know anything about their clothes or bags. The only thing that I know a little bit about is their teacups, which is a little unusual. I learned about those from Men on Bags, which is Frozen Luxury and Dock Luxury. They would use their teacups to spill the tea, and. I have a, a small, but I want it to be a growing teacup collection, like a luxury teacup collection. I have my eye on an Hermes one, and I would like to add a Versace teacup. And when I think of Versace, I think of over the top, like Baroque, black and gold. So that's what I think. Not, not a lot. I don't know enough about them. Um, you also asked, is your big birthday purchase planned? Yes, it is. I, my birthday's not for a few months still, but I think I'm gonna be able to get my big birthday purchase next month. I wanna go ahead and snag it. It would be a pre-loved item. I would not be willing to pay full price retail for this particular item, because it's just crazy expensive. Even pre-loved, it's crazy expensive. But I've been saving and saving, and I think I'm finally gonna have everything I need for it next month, unless something comes up, it always does, we'll see and hopefully the one that I'm eyeing will still be available. But I'm not gonna tell you what it is yet. I'm gonna have to wait for that video. Darth Alex 1138 asks, if there was one limited edition piece you could get, what would it be? Like multicolor, monogramouflage, et cetera. That's a tough one because there are so many limited edition pieces that I would love to have. And the first one that comes to mind, and this is because I did the stealing other people's bags video yesterday, or I filmed it last night. First one that comes to mind is the Race Alma from Louis Vuitton that Leo Lion LV has in her collection. Beautiful bag, 
I could make it work in my wardrobe. It's really not quite my style. It's really bold and graphic and I, I'm drawn to those things, but it's not the style that I take on. That's a whole different video. Um, but I do love that and the Aquarelle, which is the image that I put up on my Instagram asking you guys for the Q&A. The Aquarelle in white, I just don't think that would go with my wardrobe very well. I don't wear light colors a lot and pinks and that has it in there, but it's beautiful. And that's also one of the first things I think about when I think about bags, limited edition bags. And I also mentioned in the stealing video, um, Jill Maurer has the Kusama Speedy. I would love to have that. I would like someday when I can just start collecting things that I don't feel like I have to wear all the time. I would like to have a Speedy collection, collection of limited edition Speedies. I think that would be wonderful. I've seen a few people that have collections like that. I would like that too. That would be nice. Lucia YZ, are you saving up to buy a house? Rent will continue to increase on average over our lifetimes. Is this a concern for you? Thank you and love your channel and the time you put into your content. Thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, not saving up to buy a house. I have absolutely no interest at all in owning a property. Um, rent increasing is just something I'll have to deal with. It's not a concern of mine. As long as I have a job and I put money into savings and retirement, I do all that. There are many reasons that I don't want a house, want to own a house, and much of that has to do with the extra expenses beyond mortgage. There's also the fact that well, a lot of it has to do with with bad things I've seen happen to other people who have owned houses. A big part of that in Houston is flooding. Houston floods. You're probably going to get your house flooded at some point. I don't want to have to deal with that. I've been through it a few times, um, not with my own home, but with people I know. This is why I live on an upper floor and my car is parked on an upper floor so that I will never have to deal with flooding. And then there are maintenance issues, having to replace large appliances and air conditioners and roofs and all that stuff, yard maintenance, and then taxes, property taxes that I have heard from people who own homes in Houston very wildly. So those are a few of the big reasons that I would not want to own a house. I know there are advantages, but it's just not for me. Frozen Luxury. Hello, I just mentioned you. He asks, what do you like to see in other luxury videos? What made you start YouTube? And who would you like to collab with on YouTube? What do I like to see in other luxury videos? I do enjoy the unboxings and all that sort of typical thing from the luxury community, the, the videos that we all do, but I also get a little bored with that stuff. So I love it when the luxury YouTubers do other things and I try to do other things on my channel too. What made me start YouTube? I have answered that before. You said you weren't you weren't sure. Um, Wendy, when she was Wendy's Wendy's Loving Life, she used to go by a different name, Wendy's Loving 50, I think. She inspired me to start YouTube. She was one of the people I watched and she had a Q&A once where somebody asked her about starting a channel and she encouraged everybody who was watching that if you're thinking about it, just go ahead and do it. And that was that was what really motivated me to get started. And then who would I like to collab with? I don't have anyone particular in mind. I've collabed with a few people, you and a few others. And I did a uh, Christmas gift exchange a few years ago. And then I've collabed with Jill Maurer and most recently Yota Style. Um, I haven't, I don't think too much about collabing. Like I don't plan for that. It's just something that comes organically when I come across another YouTuber and we make a connection and we're like, hey, we should do some videos together. Nice to hear from you too. I would love to see you back on YouTube. Sasso Sindra asks, what bag or bags could you never part with? And what is currently on the top of your wish list? Well, the top of my wish list is my birthday bag, which I'm not revealing, and the bag or bags I could never part with. That would, there's just one in my collection, and that's the Louis Vuitton Turin MM, and that's because it has sentimental value. I've said the boyfriend purchased that for me when we went to New York a few years ago. Zen Blank says, please discuss the proper care and cleaning for your bags. That's a whole other video, so I can't get into that here. I also don't really talk about cleaning bags. I'm no expert on that and I wouldn't want to give advice that then didn't work for you and get blamed for your bag being ruined. So yeah. Erica Boss 10, how do you save up for luxury items? 
Uh, all I do is pay my bills and whatever is left, I use that for groceries and eating out and luxury. That's about all I buy, to be honest. And I do have a video on this too, I'll link it below. Mason Riley Cook says, I'm afraid to buy secondhand. How can I be sure I'm not purchasing a fake? I've read on purse forums that posters of seen bags get authenticated that are actually fake. My understanding is that there is now technology or programs that retailers use to determine authenticity simply by submitting photos of the luxury item. What are your thoughts on this form of authentication? I think that photos can take you to a certain point, but to really authenticate, you have to have an item in your hands. Sometimes something can look identical and you can't really tell the difference until you feel it. There are several places where you can have things authenticated online, where you send them photos. I've seen those places recommended by some of the Facebook groups. I don't personally know them that well, so I could tell you what they are. I could link those below. My, my thought on it really with any pre-loved, any authenticator is that there are some really incredible fakes out there and every once in a while one is gonna slip through no matter how good you are. I've even heard of people returning fake bags to places like Louis Vuitton and that they don't even know the difference. Um, same person asks, how or where do you sell your bags that you no longer want? Fortunately, I have YouTube and Instagram and I have this audience that's interested in those same items, so that's where I sell them. Most people don't have that, so I would look at places like Fashion File. You're not gonna get as much as you may want, but you'd be able to sell it. Like if you're looking to sell something quickly and you're not, you don't necessarily have the time to wait around for somebody to have the price that, to, to be willing to pay what you're asking, then I would go to someplace like Fashion File. Another place you could go is the Facebook groups and post there. And then you also ask, do your LV SAs know that you have a YouTube channel. My sales associate, um, I mentioned her earlier, Becca at the Houston Galleria main store. She does. She knows that. She knew about that when she was my SA at Henry Vendel. And when she knows that I'm coming in, she, well last time anyway, when she knew I was coming in, she had watched a recent video. She's, she's pretty good with customer service like that and, and very personal with me. And I'm sure she's like that with other customers too. So I suspect that she would have watched the video to have something to talk to me about and connect me with. She's good at her job. You have several questions, Mason Riley Cook. Have you already made a video on how you store your bags or display your collection? I talked about that earlier. I'd love to see how you organize your SLGs and bags. So are there any years or dates that you steer clear of? This is a great question when purchasing pre-loved LV handbags. Certain years the quality wasn't as good, canvas was a different color, etc. There are certain years that have had defects, um, especially lately, some with glazing, some with the coating on top of the canvas rubbing off. I have not kept close enough track of that to be able to tell you what the years are. But again, with the Facebook groups, they are very knowledgeable. I get a lot of knowledge from them. So if you ever have a bag that has that problems, go to the Facebook group and they'll usually say, oh yeah, that's a known defect for that year and we can get the information there. You might actually just want to go and ask them this question and see what kind of responses you get because I'm sure they would know more than I do. And then you also say you're an, oh, this is so sweet. Hold on. You see if there's actually a question here or if it's just a glowing review of me. Yes, it's just a glowing review, so I'm not gonna read it for everybody, but thank you, I do appreciate it. And then you have one last question or comment anyway. Mason Riley Cook says, I promise I'm not trying to spam you. I just have a lot of questions. If not in your Q&A, will you at some point share your thoughts and experiences with various keychains, key fobs, key pouches, key wallets? What, what works best for you? Do you worry about keys damaging your bags? Do you switch them out regularly or do you have a tried and true go-to key management system that you love? It is a little bit of a struggle. So I wanted to get the little like six key holder from Louis Vuitton, but I wasn't sure that I wanted to spend 200 or 250 on that without trying it out first. So I got a Kate Spade one. This was a few years ago that was only 40 or so. And I found that I didn't like it. When I had it in my car, it hung too low, my leg would hit it, and that bothered me. So I decided that was not the best key situation for me. What I ended up with is just 
um, a regular keychain and it has a little leather loop on it that I got from Etsy that's made of recycled or repurposed Louis Vuitton canvas. And that way when I'm walking the dogs or I'm carrying something to and from work, I can have that loop over my finger and the keys hang down so I've got it handy. And then when I store it in a bag, I usually will keep it in my mini pochette so it's not scratching the outside of any of the bags or the inside of my handbag. So that's the solution that I've come up with and it seems to work pretty well for me so far. Colin Anderson, will you stand with the Louis Vuitton brand if they ever phase out their classic canvas offerings? <sighs> I have mixed feelings about Louis Vuitton, you guys. I think you guys know this from some of the videos that I've done. I love Louis Vuitton, I love a lot of the merchandise that they have, but I also despise them sometimes, and I'm, I don't hold them on a pedestal like I did before I started buying them and it was this luxury thing that was, you know, out of reach. They are just a store like any other store and they're a business like any other business. They're in it for the bottom line and they've done quite a few things that I don't agree with that I think are maybe good for them but bad for their customers and I still buy Louis Vuitton so I probably would stand, I don't know that standing with them is quite the right language that I would use but I'd still buy things from them. Sharon the Night Owl asks what are the next three luxury items on your wish list in the order you plan to search and purchase them. So I have a wish list video from earlier this year and I can tag that below. I have one item, my birthday item, that I'm gonna be getting and I'm not gonna say what that is. Other than that, I have a few things floating around, but generally I don't have a like a structured list and I'm gonna get this and then this and this because a lot of what I buy is pre-loved. So a lot of it depends on what happens to come up when I'm looking through the pre-loved sites every day. And if it comes up, is it the right price? Is it the right condition? So it just, it really depends. The the when I get things really depends. Bella XO Luna says, uh, love your true and honest opinions and your views. Thank you. Looking forward to, or wait, looking to purchase a Neverfull MM or a Speedy Bandolier 30. Going to send to an artist to recreate the 2017 Louis Vuitton Tahitian print, uh, pink print, since I missed out and also due to others selling for triple the amount of cost for a used bag. So by purchasing new and having it created, it's over half the cost. Any feedback I would love. Um, my only feedback would be if you're doing that, I think it's a cute idea, it's just fine. Um, my feedback would be to look at the reviews for the artwork that this person has done and maybe be in contact with some of the people if you can or if they have YouTube videos where people have talked about how the paint has worn, that would be my concern. I've been thinking about painting a Speedy that I have and one of my big holdups, besides just not actually sitting down and working on the design, is that I worry that the paint will start chipping over time. Um, Wendy's Loving Life has a Neverfull, she just posted a video recently about it, how she'd had some stripes painted and a W with the heart and how that bag right away started chipping in some places, the paint started chipping. So that would be my biggest concern about that. I think the idea of painting bags is fantastic, personalizing them that way. Just wanna make sure that the paint is coated somehow, that it's not going to chip. And I don't, if, I don't know if it's even possible to paint on a bag and not have it chip. I would do that research on the artist, the artwork, and how that wears before you go through the expense of any of that. 1650 forever, I have a few statement necklaces with big glass or big faux turquoise and sometimes real turquoise stones. And I know you're not supposed to get them wet, but do you store them hanging or lying flat? So care and storage of statement necklaces. Boring, I know, but I need to take care of my stuff before I buy anything new, right? I'm gonna say this is really more of a question for Jill Maurer, so maybe Jill, you could weigh in in the comment section. I store mine, I have this hanging thing it's meant to be hung on a like a coat hanger and hang in your closet and it has these little kind of plastic well not kind of they are plastic pockets and i'll put necklaces in there so i can see them and it saves space and i'm sure that's not the ideal way to store jewelry but that's what i do so i am i don't think i'm really the best person to ask Maybe Jill can help you out with that. Vika Valiere, am I saying that right? If you weren't a teacher, 
What profession would you see yourself doing? Excellent question. I have thought about this because my job is an art teacher and I teach photography and I, I'm also certified to teach all of art, but I happen to just teach photography now. Being an art teacher is not always the most stable job. I think we've gotten to a point now, at least in my district, where fine art teachers are valued so we don't just get put on the chopping block anytime there's a budget crisis. We also have a great union that looks out for a lot of our jobs, not just the fine arts, but everybody. They really keep our district on track, I think. They hold them accountable. I am aware every year when contracts are on their way to us and principals are deciding whether they want you to be in your job next year or whether your job will still exist next year. I am always a little bit nervous in the spring about that. Someday that could happen where I don't have my job anymore and would I want to still be teaching? It depends on the school. It totally depends on the school and the families. Or would I want to look into something else? And I've thought about, uh, it's so tough because on the one hand, you kind of need a job that pays your bills, right? And I like to have a job that affords me a little extra to buy nice things sometimes. But then I also want a job that I love and that's really more important to me. I happen to have both at the moment. So when I think about if I had to leave teaching and I think about the things I love, they generally tend to be in some kind of helping profession. So my tendency, and I've looked at this before, is to go toward nonprofit work that just doesn't pay very well most of the time. So I don't know. Something with animals also doesn't pay well. It's, it's tough. I do wish, the boyfriend asked me this the other day, if I could go back in time and change anything about my education and career, what would I do differently? I would do everything the same except I would also study business. I think that would have opened up a few more doors too. And I studied psychology. I have a master's. I was actually in a I was actually in a PhD program, but I didn't do my dissertation, so I just got a master's out of it. But my, my PhD master's education is in psychology, social psychology, not clinical where I'm sitting one-on-one -on -one with a, like a patient, but research psychology. And that's interesting to me, but there was a lot that I didn't like about the process, a lot of political stuff I didn't like about it. So yeah, I, I really don't know, but that's where I am. Boy, I'm giving some long answers said this was gonna be fast, I lied. Lauren6708, and by the way, y'all see me looking over here a lot, it's because I'm reading the questions off my computer screen, I should have said that up front. Lauren6708, I have a few lifestyle and LV questions that would be fun. What are five everyday items that you cannot live without? Uh, I think I actually did a video on this, so I'll link that below. What shows are you and the boyfriend into lately? Um, we watch Handmaid's Tale, that comes out every Wednesday, so we're on top of that. We watch The View every day. We have a love-hate relationship with The View. And we watch Rachel Maddow every night. I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with her show too. And I usually fall asleep during her show actually, but I still get some good information. Do you have any unpopular opinions about LV, like disliking a popular bag? I do. Somebody else asked me about a current collection. I don't know if it's in the Instagram questions or the YouTube questions, but I'll get to that about some of the collaborations and some of the more interesting things that Vuitton has put out in the last few years. There are definitely pieces that I don't like that a lot of people do and that I do like that a lot of people don't. First example that comes to mind without getting into a bunch of different examples, that could be a whole video, is there's a bag coming out that's, you know in the giant monogram or like the, um, the Christian Dior book bag, the big boxy thing? So Vuitton's coming out with another one of those, but it's black on one side, orange on the other, and it has the giant LV logo monogram. But then inside the monogram, it's a leopard print and then the interior of the bag is an orange. I really don't like that. And a lot of people on the Facebook groups that I've seen just love it. They're going crazy over it. I, mm, it's not for me. And you ask, what are your thoughts on the, oh, you're the one that asked this, okay. Um, what are your thoughts on the LV Artie Capucine collab, specifically the Urs Fisher bag? Let me look up what the Urs Fisher bag is. I'm gonna guess it's the one with the fruit because that's the one everybody's talking about, but let's see. Okay, yes, I just looked it up. I'll put a picture of it here. It is the fruit bag. I love it. I know everybody hates it. <laughs> so this is a prime example of what I was just talking about. You know, if I had the money to throw around, I'd totally get it. It is just so 
weird. I love that about it. It reminds me very much of Andy Warhol. Bridgette1922 asks, do you have a wish list for handbags and do you change what's on your wish list over time? I do, and I mentioned that earlier that I have a video about that, so I will link that below instead of going through the whole list. It definitely changes over time. I'll add and subtract things from it. And I don't go back and look at the wish list. It's mostly just in my head but I do have it written down somewhere. I'm not even sure where it is at the moment. And I think one of the good things about buying pre-loved and having a wish list is that I'll go look at the wish list that I wrote months ago and there are items on it that I haven't purchased yet that I don't want anymore. It's helpful for me to um, avoid impulse buys. Not that I can just buy anything I want all the time anyway, but I think that does save me some money buying pre-loved and having to wait for things to come available rather than just going to the store and buying whatever I want. All right, that is it for the Instagram questions. And there are a lot more questions on YouTube. So this is definitely going to be more than one video. I don't know if I'll put the Q and A's up back to back or if I'll spread them out because I know you don't want to see like 20 Q and A's in a row, right? So we'll see, I haven't decided yet. All right, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all your great questions and I will see you next time. Have a fantastic day, bye.